So, Dwayne Wade is out here at it again, loudly and proudly, loving his fucking kids. And for whatever reason, niggas like to be late for most things, but they love being on time to be homophobic and transphobic. So, here we go, right? Now, for those of you who are not in the know, Dwayne Wade has, or had a son named Zion, who was very out and proud as a gay youth. And this past week, uh, it's come to light that Zion will no longer be considered that and will be referred to as Zaya and is transitioning. And both Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade voiced publicly how proud and how much they love their daughter, right? And of course, you know, any time Dwayne Wade does anything in regards to that particular child, niggas have a bunch of shit to say on social media. So we kind of went through the regular run-of-the-mill toxic black community shit that they normally say in regards to LGBTQ children and people in general. So you're, this against this is against God and things like, you know, this is the gay agenda coming for our kids. And, you know, Gabrielle Union must be forcing something on the baby. And Dwayne Wade must be forcing something on the baby. You know, you have a bunch of mini Kevin Hart's ripping and running around joking that if they ever had a child like Zaya, they'd beat the shit out of them. You know, the normal fucked up things that, you know, black LGBTQ people here in their community. Now, there is one assertion that I find particularly nefarious and suspect. And I find it that way because of who's saying it and what concern they're trying to voice, right? So the assertion goes like this. This child is too young. 12 is entirely too young for any child to really know or make such an assessment about themselves. No child can do that. Their brain's not even fully developed. So obviously, Dwayne Wade is doing something wrong as a parent and is damaging this child, which is allowing for this behavior, right? Now, on a personal level, I find this shit nefarious because I am the living proof that you can absolutely be able to identify yourself at a very early age in life and carry that shit all the way to fucking adulthood. Now, I know I haven't really told you guys this, but um, I'm gay as fuck. I came out when I was nine. I had my first girlfriend when I was 12. And for the majority of my life, anytime I had a say in how I presented myself as a youth, it was always in a masculine manner or like how the new kids say it, gender non-conforming. But either way, tomboyish, stud, butch, masculine of center, whatever the fuck, I always presented myself in a very masculine way. And I have two parents who have always been rather supportive of me, who have loved me unconditionally and not in a way of like, well, we're just going to ignore that aspect of my daughter's life when we talk about this, like they are very open and free about who I am to other people. And they're very loving and they're very open about how much they love me. So what Zaya, Zaya was able to do and be able to identify with themselves is not weird to me because not only am I someone who has done that journey, but I have experienced and watched countless other people in the LGBTQ community go through that fucking journey. And not only that, I'm one of the few lucky ones who has had parents like Dwayne Wade who have been nothing but loving and supporting and accepting unconditionally of who I am. So this whole situation is not new nor novel to me. So it's kind of just nefarious because this assertion is low-key trying to erase people like me from existing. You know, trying to say that people like me don't exist, which is kind of suspect to me. But beyond a personal level, it's nefarious in a way because a lot of these people are people who claim to be pro-black. They claim to be very 
concern about the black community, about the black youth, about what happens with black people and black plight, right? The hoteps, hotep adjacent, sometimes Ados niggas do. And all this other shit. Like they say that they care so fucking much, right? But I'm noticing that this particular assertion is kind of like that benevolent way of trying to be homophobic or transphobic without tripping any wires. It's becoming a dog whistle, if you will. A lot like how a lot of white people who want to say and do racist shit will just do dog whistles so that they can do it without having to worry about being called racist. This right here is a fucking dog whistle. And me personally, I feel like, yo, if you don't like that gay shit, just say that. And also accept the fact that I can identify that behavior as bigoted. And if you don't give a fuck, then don't give a fuck. But let's call a spade a spade. If this were in the realm of race, you would be the first one to be like, well, I want to know who the racists are. So I know who the fuck I'm dealing with. Why would this notion be unfair for me as an LGBTQ person? I don't think y'all really give a fuck about Zaya or if it's or if Zaya transitioning at 12 is damaging to this person. You know, it's also a nefarious assertion because there are a shit ton of black LGBTQ youth that are very much less fortunate than Zaya and don't have parents like Dwayne Wade, who's really raising this kid to yield the complete opposite result of what usually happens to black LGBTQ youth in our community. 14% of the young people in America are black. And yet black LGBTQ youth comprises 31% of homeless youths. That's a third, my nigga, that's a problem. And it's not parents like Dwayne Wade that are creating that problem. It's parents like all these other niggas that you want to co-sign with saying that they're going to beat their kids or get rid of their kids or disown their kids that are creating these homeless youths. So these same people who want to sit here and pretend like they care about the prison industrial complex are also rather fucking silent over the fact that a third of black children who are LGBTQ are now being forced to be in a position that makes them susceptible to falling through this particular crack, which is the prison industrial complex. If you are homeless, you exacerbate your likelihood of being in the prison system dramatically. And these kids are faced with that possibility, not because they did anything illegal, not because they did anything wrong, but simply because they were themselves and their parents or their guardians threw them away for it. And I don't see these niggas. I don't see these niggas popping up trying to chastise or lecture any of these other parents who legitimately are harming their kids by forcing them out on the street for being who they are. I also don't see these niggas at any of these LGBTQ or pride conferences trying to promote awareness of this problem, which is astronomically a bigger issue than whatever the fuck Dwayne Wade is doing with his kid. Like, I promise y'all, there are plenty of organizations and plenty of programs that would gladly take your energy, time, and money to help protect the black LGBTQ youth that happen to be homeless right now living on the street. They are not going to turn you away. So if the real concern is about what about the kids, you know, this is damaging to the kids. What's more damaging to an LGBTQ child than having a parent that loves them unconditionally and loudly so that they feel nothing but confidence and pride in themselves? What's more damaging than that is like, I don't know, being kicked out on the fucking street. And so much so that you are probably the most likely cohort to be living on the street because your community does not see any value in you and is absolutely fucking toxic towards you. I don't know. I feel like that's like a, a bigger fucking problem. And I wish like hell 
that a lot of these people who are voicing their opinions about Dwayne Wade would like, I don't know, say something about that. <laughs>